We are back, uh, the Black and Blue Podcast, and um, today's episode, uh, it's it's one of those heavy words that we're all hearing in social media. I wouldn't even call it a heavy word. It's, it's one of those triggering words. It's a COVID? word. No, come on. <laughs> that one triggers me. I'm so sick of COVID. Right. Stupid right. COVID. We, we want to get back to Gosh. regular life. No, it is not that buzzword. Um, the buzzword is is defund the police. And we yeah. hear that so much in, in the media right now. We hear it at protests. I know I hear it all the time. But... I don't feel like there has been a clear and concise definition of what that means. And I think it means different things to different 100%, people. 100%, yes, right? I agree. And so I, I think that we should um, hone in on that, especially, again, this show, it's the Black and Blue Podcast. So as you know, Chris is a sheriff. I am definitely not, right? So the things that we talk about, I try and represent the community the best that I can uh, from a, uh, a heart-centered place. and. Chris does the same thing as a sheriff, and um, and so yeah. So let's let's talk about. It. Uh, well, the back end is you see the aftermath when all order is just yes out of the uh, out of question and it, it's erupted. I mean, imagine if there was no other side to keep from innocent people being harmed. Totally. I mean, that. So let's just start with the logical thing that we all have to agree on: that you can't defund law and order. No. Otherwise, you have chaos. Yes. And somebody's going to rise to the top. I mean, you can watch no matter where you are. Somebody will always rise. In one of the episodes. You talked about how you connect with an OG mm -hmm. or a shot caller yep. or a rock boss. Yep. Somebody's going to rise up. Completely. So when people talk about defund, it means just cut the funds of law enforcement. But to cut the funds where law enforcement doesn't exist will never happen. Yeah. So one thing we have to agree on is what exactly it isn't. It's not... I want to defund every law enforcement officer in this particular jurisdiction. Yeah. It may be defund, and I've said this on on, on to millions of people yeah. on different uh, news broadcasts from CNN to Fox to MSNBC. I said you can't defund police, but you should defund ignorant police leadership. Mm, that's good. Really, really quick though. Are, are there some people that are saying defund the police yeah. as, as abolish police? Yes, anti-authority. Mm. That wow. and I'm gonna tell you, that doesn't. I always look at it. That doesn't have a particular group. That just has people who literally don't want anybody over them. And Those a lot of ones, times it's because they want to do some crazy stuff. That's right. They <laughs> right. are going to do things productive. <laughs> yeah, no way. And they're the ones that come into your places that you see that disrupt other people's community mm -hmm. because they use it as an excuse to express, "I don't want to to be under." anyone's authority yeah. that's though, why they hate teachers their parents the yep. priests everybody even though i don't like getting pulled over by the yeah. police but that i'm still not going to be like i hope there's no police in my like i yeah. would never live in a community where there exactly no when you buy a house you know what people ask hey what's the crime like what are the schools Completely. like everybody's like hey we have great schools no cops yes right. that's Who's a great neighborhood there? exactly right. it's right. so crazy so i can tell you Prior to May 30th, 2020, yep. which was my event that started a movement in my life and around the nation, I had never even heard of the term defund the police. Right. I've heard of budget cuts. Yeah. I've heard of, of, of reductions, but never have I heard of defund. So, Did it even exist before? Dude, the I, I never Floyd even heard of it. Yeah. No. I remember exactly where I was because I did over 100 interviews those first two weeks. Yep. After about five days, uh, that, that May 30th and, of course, the 29th when the whole country went crazy, People started talking about, hey, you better get briefed up on defunding the police. I'm like, what, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. They want to defund police. And, and that's when the big news stations picked it up. Somebody must have lobbed that bomb out there. And since then, it's been a fun thing to talk about. Yeah. It's created more uh, political antagonism. Yeah. It, uh, uh, is that a word, antagonism? I think so. Jamie, is that a word? Yes. I think okay, so. good. Yes. It's created more antagonistic behavior yeah. from different parties. That's better. Uh, but really, it means nothing. Like, right. you can't do that. So I've been watching this defunding business, right? Yeah. And so you look at big cities that have kept all this going, Portland, mm -hmm. Seattle. Take Seattle, for example. Seattle was the first to actually start the defunding, in my opinion, the defunding. That's at least where I heard it from. Yeah. They defunded, but this is what it is in real dollars. They cut $4 million mm -hmm. from a $400 million police budget. Right. 
and they call it defunded. So yeah. it, they cut to, in order to appease that, yes, they got yeah, defunded, yeah. but no, you've got $396 million <laughs> right running your police department. Them, yeah. Let me tell you what defunding looks like. Right now in my current position, mm -hmm. they have taken $4.3 million from me, and my budget is $34 million. Yeah. So I want you to do the math. Seattle yeah, 400 defunded $400 million. Correct. They took four. Genesee County, 34 million, they took 4.3 million. Wow. But they didn't do it because they didn't want police services. They did it because of reductions in revenues coming in. It's it's a cost saving. And I don't care where you are, you can ask anybody. The first people to be cut are the police. Yeah. It's public service. And it doesn't make any sense to me because I'm like, no, you need to find ways to fund your police in order for them to be the best police ever, right. which leads into our second topic, and that is what police reform is. I totally disagree. Wait, hang on, wait. We can't what? just jump right out. I know, of it was a parlay. <laughs> no, it was a parlay. we're not parlaying yet. There's so still I'll fast forward. a lot of stuff. Okay. No, we're rewinding a little bit. I, I want to touch more on this defund the, the police stuff, right? So first of all, <laughs> it's funny. You're like rushing straight to the finish line. Um, so defunding the police. I know that, and again, I didn't know that there really are some people that are just saying it as just a yes. police altogether. But the fact that some people Small are. Small amount of that's crazy, right? If, if people think that, we know that even, even Al people, Sharpton and Jesse Jackson say you can't defund police. Totally, yeah. Are you we, serious? We all we all know that, right? Like yeah, any right. law-abiding citizen would say that without the police, there right. comes total chaos, right. right? And we all know that even for myself, and I live in a nice suburban neighborhood in San Diego. But you take away the police, everybody's getting robbed. <laughs> we know that, right? And I don't want right. to have to have to. Uh, protect my house yeah, on a regular basis. Yeah, you want to lay your head down knowing they're out there. Somebody's going to take care of it. People are patrolling yes. and, and going to make that happen. Yep. So we don't want to abolish police. Yep. I think that's just silly. But I I do think when, when people say those things, and the way that I've always viewed it, I've, I've always viewed it as, and I hope what people are saying is reallocation of funds. Yep. Like let's yep. work on better mental health uh, uh, treatment for people who need it. Let's fund better training for police officers officers so that some of the situations mm -hmm. that we're continually seeing that that budget exists for them to even be mm -hmm. able to do those things right and so if if people are viewing it as does too much funds or too many resources for the police here's the example that i always see on social media they'll take a picture of police marching in in like super expensive riot gear mm -hmm. right and they'll say we have all this money for riot gear for the police mm -hmm. yet teacher salaries are such and such or social mm -hmm. workers salaries are such and such and so i feel like there's got to be some sort of middle ground mm -hmm. somewhere right where rather than people saying defund the police we should say no they actually need the funds for better training to be able to do the things that that we hope they do right mm -hmm. like when you talk about to serve and protect yeah. i guess a perfect example we could talk about would be the uh the wendy's drive through shooting, I forget yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. gentleman's name, right? Yep. And what people tried Georgia. to use, it was in, in Atlanta, yep. 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 So the example that people tried to use was if social workers would have shown up when the guy was was there. And I loved how you said, yeah, if those social workers show up there and then he pulls a gun exactly. on those social workers, yes. then how do they deal with that situation? Right. So we know that just rushing straight to social workers now trying to do the job no of police, yeah. that is not going right. to happen. Nor should police do the job of social workers. At all, at all, right? So there's got to be some sort of middle ground there yeah. where the funding for law enforcement to be able to have better training to to handle certain situations that a lot of times if if you take away the funds to do that i mean and i constantly hear of officers being um overworked and underpaid yeah. that there's not enough staffing to be able to do some of the jobs mm -hmm. that in certain cities when people call the police they're like they're not coming yeah right and yeah, so i so know that if it, if you have cities like that that already know if i call the police they're not going to yes. show up then then that's terrifying for those people. Yet those those are the same people saying defund the police. And I I'm don't like, get Hold it. Up. You just I know, called. I know. And hoped that they would I show know. up. I Why know would you want me. to pay for something that you know you're going to get? Exactly right. Like yeah. you should want those funds to yeah. be there. So I I think that conversation needs to be revisited, and people need to like really pay attention to. Well, if you if you want those funds to be reallocated, what does that look like for the police departments to maybe divvy that up and say, okay. This is very important to the community, right? 
perfect example. When I was involved in a hit and run accident, um, maybe like three months ago, some teens hit my car and took off. And the moment that I called um, 911, the dispatcher, she asked me for the intersection that I was at as I'm like racing and following behind this car. Literally within like five minutes, I've got two police cars on my side as we are all. Oh my gosh, going, right? that's bad Five to minutes. the bone, man. I was like, yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is gangster. Yes. Right? I was like, let's get these guys. That's right. And See? then the kids jump out of the car and take off on foot. And that was when I stopped because I knew I could have caught you those cats. You want to run, though. Right? I know. Of course I, I did. There's a Nike track <laughs> athlete, man. Like, you were going to caught them. As long as I don't run more than a mile. Exactly. Well, that too. But also, I knew that they might have weapons, right? And so there all there also comes that time where it's like, stop and let the trained yeah. professionals, who that is what they do, let them do it. And and I just, I loved seeing them go into battle like that That's for awesome. me, right? Yes. And, and so to take away funds from someone who I know, if they did not show up by my side, yeah. those kids would have just got away, yeah. right? Because I wasn't going to chase them down on foot right. over my bumper so being time knocked out. off of my car. Did you know who those cops were? Nope. Had you ever met them? Never in my life. Did they put their life on the line? He jumped out of the car and took off on foot into the bushes to catch these Thank kids. you. That's that, Thank you. That is remarkable to me, Yes. Right? And, so, and so again, I, I don't want people to see this episode and say, yeah, but that's one example, Ken, of, of what you experienced. Yeah, well, let's talk about some of these cities where it's just crime after crime yeah. after crime. And if we know that the police are overworked and underfunded, we need to talk about how do we direct those funds in a way that can help them do yeah. the job that they would like to do for the community, rather than having to say, we don't have the money or the resources or the tools or the weapons or the the whatever to be able to serve you in the way that we would like to so then those same people begin to complain about our our police department that polices our community they're not doing this and they're not doing that and it's like we should all sit down and have a conversation of what does that look like how can we better serve the community what is it that that we can do and i think it goes right back to your conversation of let's walk yeah it's also let's talk yeah oh yeah right? <laughs> let's talk about what is needed here Right. And, and, and I think that people can figure that out in that way rather than just saying, take away all the funds, because yeah. sadly, that is what some people are saying. I don't think again, a small group of people. Right. Yes. Just but saying, have a big voice. And so and so that's that's my take on it. I, I hope that um, people can understand like you need you need police in your community. And and if there is this concern of how funds are spent. And I think if I. If I had to hone in on where did this whole conversation start, I feel like it started during the George Floyd protests when yes. they burned down that precinct, what was it, three or 13 or something like that. And, and they all, at a sheriff's office in Oregon. Cor- yeah. Correct. Right? Yeah. So so when they burned that down and, and destroyed it, I think people started to feel like, yeah, we got them out That's of here. That's right. And then crime Dude. goes up. Yes. Right? So rather than instead saying, hey, yeah. there have been problems at this police department. Yeah. How do we address those yes. issues and how do we fix those issues? But it doesn't mean taking away the funds and then saying they're a problematic police department. Yeah. No, there's resources that are necessary for them to not be a problematic police department. And then they can grow from there rather than just saying, we don't want any cops here in this community. That's not the solution. That is not the solution. You're trying to fix one problem, creating 10 others. Uh, yeah. And to your point, like in the San Diego PD, like that was a great example of people, when you made 911 calls, they didn't say, whoa, ho, is this Ken guy white or black? <laughs> right. Because that'll depend on how fast I get there. And does he like the police Does or he not? like the police or not? Does he have a criminal record or not? Right. Is he straight or gay? Is he Muslim? Is he atheist? Is he Catholic? None of that matters. Does he got money? Does he not have money? You know what happened? He made the call and they were there. I want people not to forget that kind of a police. I want people to think about those that go every day by the hundreds of thousands per day around our nation. Yes. Male and female, 24-7. They don't do it for the fame and fortune. Do you know, depending on where you are, and I know I, I rip on California, but they are very high paid because of the cost of living so high. Totally. But if you look in the Midwest, the average cop starts out. The average cop takes an oath, puts her life on the line, 18 bucks an hour. Wow. 18. Not for the fame and fortune. Not for anything other than I want to go out there and try to protect people. The people that are bullies... Uh, those are the ones that ruin it for all of us. Yeah. The, the chauvins, the ones that are out there that create that. But I'm telling you, that's what drives me crazy is why would you defund the people who who take a volunteer position yes. for 25 years of their life 
to go protect people they don't know, to get killed in the line of duty. As of this recording, this is uh, September the 1st of 2020, and there's over 150 cops killed wow. just this year alone. I don't know of another profession. No way. And I hate to say it, but I'm not trying. But I don't know of 150 teachers no. that have died in line of duty. I don't know 150 dentists. I don't know of 150 UPS drivers. Yeah. Or I, you take any no profession, profession. Yeah. and yet these people go out there every single day and and they put their lives online, and they're the first to get caught. So I don't want to victimize police because you know we're underpaid, and overworked. That's a fact. Because our shift work doesn't end by you know the clock ticks. Okay, I'm just going to leave this accident scene. I'm going to leave this investigation. Okay. And there's agencies that have no funds that are still trying to do the job. I say that because the defunding, I think it was a it was a, a convenient term to keep problems going. Mm -hmm. And I think it was politicized. And I know that we've always worked with budget constraints and some people have more property values than others, but but you can't defund men and women that go there every single day to do the right job. And I've said it before, but you should defund ignorant yeah. and ineffective police leadership because that's where it starts. Completely. It is my job as the sheriff to run a police agency that's efficient and does it and gets it done and is under budget and knows what resources. And it's the government's job, whether it's a city council, a mayor, or a county commission, or the people that fund the that police agency, they need to be in sync. Yep. So they're not withholding funds from an agency that does it right or an agency getting funds they shouldn't get and doing it wrong. Yes. Those Absolutely. two things have to come together wow. because those are the police departments that make a difference. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. See why I didn't want you to hurry up and skip it. That's true. I saw the finish line. I was going <laughs> to no, sprint. No, I'm not, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Because <laughs> people needed to hear that. Yeah. That but guess what? This 4.3 million I have to cut, a 1.5 comes from insurance savings. 100,000 comes from forfeiture. 664,000 comes from line items that I just can't use anymore for non-personnel issues. I lost four officers from retirements. Those are gone through attrition. I have another 50,000 come from our human trafficking forfeitures that we're taking. I have another 239,000 coming because two officers are being paid by another grant. These are how the things, it's like, I'm trying to do everything I can yes. with limited money and yet still do the same amount of work. Yeah. So I don't know of another field that does that. Like now put at risk due to those funds that are withdrawn. And that's what your concern is, right? So you're yeah. like, I still have to get the job done. Yeah, it is demoralizing for our people. Dude, do you know how much good work the sheriff's office here does in Genesee County? Yeah. And yet we gotta go back and I gotta tell them, hey, listen, we're getting cut 4.3 million. If anything, everybody should get a bonus, you know? In the private sector, if we do a great job, everybody wins in yes. Christmas. Yes, and that doesn't work. Yet. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. Wow. And that's what frustrates people both on the inside and the outside. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we still do it, bro. Yeah. yeah. Still take the oath. Absolutely. So I talked and I transitioned. Okay to transition? Yeah, yeah, we're good now. We're because good. I talk about what people are frustrated is not about how much money they spend for security, mm -hmm. but how that money's spent. And when you have police that haven't got with what the times are, yes. or they, they bring people back to oppression, or they do the things with causes you to go to different cities, mm -hmm. that's where the police reform goes. Yes. And if anybody asks right now what the next step is, the next step is to make better a profession that is a noble profession, yeah. and that is police reform. Absolutely. But, okay, so elaborate on on that term. What does police reform look like to you, to you not only here in your department, but across the nation, what is that? Well, let me ask you a question. What is the number one thing that you think the people on the street think we need to reform? Um, I would say it's it's the way people are treated during those police interactions. Yeah. I would think better training would lead to better interactions. If we had to look at what is the number one thing um, that, that gets so sensationalized and is always like in our face, it's the next viral video, yes. it's the next yeah. shooting, right? There's yeah. another one that just happened this morning in LA and I'm like, oh man, LA is about to go off. And now like here I am rushing back from here to go over there to probably what's going to get set off this weekend because of this shooting that took place. And and so I think it's it's like that, right? Another person was running away and shot in the back multiple times. The guy who was recording the video was like, you didn't have to shoot him 20 times though. And so then that now becomes the headline, right? So I whether it's true or not, whether it's true or not, that just, that's, that's what it becomes. Oh my gosh. Somebody just got shot 20, 20 times. times. And then and that's the headline. Uh -huh. And, and so, so I would say what the community is looking for um, when you talk about police yeah. reform, it's the interactions yeah. that police have with, with community. Um, and when there are 
obvious moments of um, of injustice or um, racial discrimination or profiling mm-hmm. that these things that racial tension shouldn't even be a factor when it comes to a professional job and interactions with members of the community uh, but people still feel that they yeah. still feel like like you even said at the beginning of uh, one of our other episodes whenever there's a video like that like one of the first things that comes to your mind yes. is oh man was it uh, uh, a white cop and a, and a black right yeah. like it's always even as much as we hate that it it's racially charged and racially motivated it is it is and and that's really sad that here we are in 2020 i know that that's still what it is like how come people can't just be as black and white sitting right. across the table right. like this as brothers right and be able to have conversations and and it's like because we don't see enough of that, people across the country assume that we are so racially divided. And I'm like, no, that's no, what's not. in the video that Thank you're seeing. You. And so you can't yeah, now right. allow that to affect the interactions that you get to have with yeah. people. Like, hey, we're at odds with that group. And people are teaching that mess to their kids. Hey, hmm. stay away from people like that. Wow. We Both cannot. sides. Both sides are teaching I know that. It. And, and so it's like... Back to the part about about the police, you know, these types of interactions, when I think about police reform, and again, and I'm not even someone who has been heavily affected by right. it, but I could tell you, like we talked about yep. the, the talk, right, that yep. as a black father that I need to have with my children, yep. but also um, traffic stops that I've had that did not go well. Yeah, right? that, that I felt like I was profiled to even get to yeah. that stop or some of the things that were said to me or the way um, that I was treated. There are times where I'm like, if I was a middle aged white male, would I have been treated this same way? Mm. It's sad that I still have that yeah. question. Right. So we need to make sure that we address those things. And I think that comes through training that comes through the heart checks that we have for the people who even take these jobs. That are you even like in a good place to take a job like this? Yeah. Or do we see those telltale signs of certain individuals where we're like, you are not a community servant and you shouldn't even have on the badge? Trust so, me. Right? Yeah. So, so to me, that's what police reform looks like. Like, how do we get rid of the bad to make sure that honor remains in y- yeah. the profession that you're in? Because again, even as someone who has had positive and negative experiences with the police, I still give so much credit and respect to you all because I say it all the time, you do a job that I do not envy and I do not want to do. Mm. There's no way, I talked about in the last episode, I can't even be around sites of like blood and gore yeah. and stuff like that. And you have to go into that regularly. Yeah. And you have to tell families that a member of their family has passed away. Sometimes you guys are being shot at, you're being spit on and all that. I couldn't do that day in and day out. Like I do I do this sometimes once a month I'll go into a hostile situation. You guys are doing this day in and, and day out while wearing a uniform that you feel like people don't even like you simply yeah. by having on that uniform. I couldn't do it. That's why I have so much respect. For wow, man, there's a lot in that. So bottom, what I took from the whole thing is the interaction. Yeah. Like if there's the first part. So let me first start by saying everything rises and falls on leadership in any field. Yep. You know, when you look at families that fail, somebody dropped the ball as a leader. When you look at churches, when you look at universities, governments, it's all leadership. So first and foremost, the police leader needs to set the tone of what their agency is going to follow. Totally. And that tone has to be not only set, but enforced. Give an example. I've been the sheriff since January 6th of this year, 2020, and I fired four people. Wow. We have 273 people with the ninth biggest police agency. These are four people that had no business Mm -hmm. being in our business. I don't care. They're good people. Go sell nails at Home Depot. (laughs) Don't be a part of who we are, right? Yes, yes. That's where police leadership has to come in. But here's what happens is police chiefs and sheriffs and other folks are like, you know, I don't want the union problems. I don't want the civil lawsuit. No, the mission I've always said, and I've been taught this by my predecessor, always take care of the mothership. It's kind of like the mob. Don't ever go against the family, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So whatever you got to do, protect the family. Same thing here. Whatever I got to do, I don't need to protect my fellow brother if they do wrong. Yeah. I got to protect the image and the honor of law enforcement. Wow. And if cops in leadership don't do that, then you make it difficult for us. Case in point, Kenosha, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. because of bad decisions there, because of the 72 hours it took to go talk to the community in mid shift, this department here in Flint, Michigan, lost four deputies to the National Guard to go, to go there, there yeah, yeah. and fix to their fix mess. Their so now I got four less people on yes. my ship creating a, a safety hazard and an increased budget here totally. because it got way out of control and it didn't have to. Wow. 
And so that interaction means like, how does the sheriff interact with people? Yep. Well, number one, he walks with them. And if they do wrong, I take them to jail. Yeah. And I'll chase them down. And I'm going to hunt people who assault and rape kids. Yeah. But I'm going to also protect kids who get raped. I'm going to take care of old people. I'm going to find somebody who beats an animal to death. I'm going to arrest them. Yeah. I'm also going to sit down and talk to somebody who's, somebody who's mentally ill. I'm going to help an addict get off their dope. I mean, all those things have to happen. We have a great field, but it's so complicated that we yeah. need to be masters of everything. So to your point, the interaction, 100%. Yep. I deal with people that I, I growing up in my career, not now because I get to be in the position of influence and those people don't last in, in our office yes. now, but there's people I couldn't stand to work with because they're just mean, evil people. Mm -hmm. And I've said before, and I said it before on, on big TV, I said, I've known people who have a different name but would have done exactly the same thing as they did to George Floyd because they're that mean-spirited, wow. vindictive people that have nothing to do in our business. Yeah. And so until police leadership says, that's it, you're done, it, that's part of police reform. Cool. And the second thing is when you identify those people, they can't cop shop. So they can't say, hey, I got a buddy in San Diego. Yeah, yeah. He's friends with the and chief. I'll go over there. Yeah, because now you're just an idiot out there. Yeah. Then you're going to create problems for them. So, you know, I always talk about the CSC model, the criminal sexual conduct, is the only crime on our books that people have to register for even after they pay for their crime. Mm. I mean, you can do your time, but you're going to be registered for life yes. on a criminal sexual conduct list. They're going to know where you live, what you look like, what you drive forever. Wow. That registry, if you're gonna be in law enforcement and you get fired for either aggressive, mm -hmm. abusive, assaultive behavior or something racially charged, then you're done. Don't you are never be in law enforcement. Go do something else, yeah. you know what I mean? Because people don't get upset when it comes to other fields like firefighters. Have you ever heard of a firefighter riot? No, no. And never, <laughs> never. Right. But why is it law enforcement? Because we have been given such authority, such from the people, the mm -hmm. public trust, hard to build, easy to lose, those people should never be out there to do it again. You shouldn't have four or five different assaults before you're fired or before you get a viral so video. does a registry like that exist? No, that's what I'm pushing it. Wow. Yeah, you should have a police registry of assault and behavior. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be anything more than people need to know through their own. It's almost like going your team roster. Mm -hmm. So the Chargers, right? So I could go through the team no, roster. No, we don't like the Chargers. I'm just using an example. Lions. Detroit right. Lions. Right. <laughs> I can go through right now into the Detroit Lions and look at their roster. Yes. I know where they grew up. I know where their house is. I, I know everything. Yeah. I don't have any problem with people. They don't want to do where I live, but anybody does everybody now anyways. But if you need to know, hey, Chris Swanson, he's been with the office this long. He's got no criminal complaints. He's got no aggressive behaviors. He's got, this is who this person is. Yes. If I got nothing to hide, I got nothing to fear. And that's what's going to restore faith in people. But all of a sudden, I got Chris Swanson. Wait, wait a second. In 2014, he got, he got three days off for saying the N-word to somebody. Yeah. Hey, how about this? In 2016, he socked a guy in the mouth and get he got, he got a half a day off. Yeah. If that's required by police departments, now we're seeing a pattern. Now I'm held accountable as a leader. Like, dang, man, I want to get this guy out of here. Totally. Then when that happens, and they're like, I'm going to quit until I get fired. Instead of being fired, it's called being res resignation, lieu of termination. I can't say before I got fired, I went and got another cop job. Because now that has to be transferred over to there. Yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. And it doesn't exist. Yeah. And it should exist. And those who oppose it, why are you opposing it? Absolutely. I go back. If you got nothing to hide, you got nothing to fear. I don't oppose the sex offender list. Exactly. Because I'm not one. <laughs> right. Right. So how do we how do we get more Sheriff Swansons across the country? This right here. Do you, do you, you think and that I changes the voice. profession? Dude, yeah. Yes. The, the, you talk about the Holy Spirit. I remember... It's like uh, June 2nd or 3rd when all this was happening. Yeah. I got done with Poppy Harlow and on CNN. And I get done. She's I pushed, awesome, by the way. She was great. Yeah. I stepped away and my staff said, Sheriff, 20 million people just heard you for six minutes. Yeah. And so... Well, last weekend, do you recall what I asked all of the production team to do for this show and you and I? That we dedicate this show mm -hmm. to be used supernaturally to change the world, yeah. to make history. Absolutely. That's how you get more of me and more of you. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. Keep doing what you're doing. I just, I, I hope that we can do it fast enough because the the negative videos, the viral videos yep. are coming out. Look at, look at just how short the time was from George Floyd to Jacob Blake to we might be able to say in the next few days, maybe in the next few weeks, yep. the next one 
is coming. I know. And it's unfortunate because as as a man of faith, I'm not looking for the next negative thing that's going to happen. I know. I'm not even designed to think that way. But historically, that's yeah. what we've been seeing. And so it's almost like, you know, there there have to be things like this. Yes. That, and I guess that last episode that we did about how we inspire and influence yeah. other people to create change in their own way. I, I just hope that these conversations, like, you know, when we talk about what does yeah. police reform look like? In my opinion, police reform looks like more Sheriff Swanson's. Dude, that's who, police that, there's a lot more of me out there than they're not me. And to get that, the only way to do that is people need to seek out that there are people out there like me and others. And, and during one of our breaks, I, I have this uh, site that I go to called Police One. And so it's all these different things. He's, and I just read just the last update, a Daytona Beach cops save a man from jumping off a bridge. It shows the video. The guy's about to jump off the bridge. These cops jump and hold him and they're fighting to bring him back. Go into uh, Georgia where a cop in the jail has a stroke mm-hmm. and the inmates see him having a stroke. They surround him and they put him on a chair and they're banging on the windows to get help in there yeah. and they save this 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 deputy's life. Yeah. I mean, there's cops that are they're doing CPR on the dead baby on the yeah. hood of his patrol car and the baby's breathing again. Like, yeah. there are great stories out there. You if you that, only that, seek negative, you will find negative. Find. You, that, you know that those are the only videos I share on the Free Hugs Project? Like, the, the videos like that. Yes. That about. The videos where, yes. um, like there was one that I, I just recently shared where um, there were uh, there were two cops so I guess some lady had called the police on kids being too loud playing football in the street and so the officers who showed up they instead um, join in and they're running routes See? and they the cops were so into the game that while running the routes and they're still wearing their whole their gear and they catch the football and fall down in the street right and and it was just so awesome See? because you can only imagine right. this woman in the window looking yeah. out like I yeah. called these guys because these kids, and it's I like, know. let the kids be kids, right? And so, by the those, way, I have a name for them. You know how like, you're always talking about Karens? Yes. I feel bad for Karens out there. but For I've the never, real Karens. I know, for the real good Karens. The good Karens. <laughs> but there is a name my dad taught me growing up. These people are just bitsy. Yeah. I've never met a bitsy. What is a bitsy? A bitsy is that lady who called because kids are playing football. Got She's it. bitsy. <laughs> okay. I've never heard that. I'm coining before. the term. I love Bitsy. it. Bitsy. I mean, Doesn't that I just turn? You just think about what conscious in your head. Bitsy is like the one who's small yeah, yelling at the Walmart worker <laughs> because, remember that, Jamie? Nobody's counting her groceries and right. she's just like, Wes, this is ridiculous. I'm like, you're Bitsy. You're Bitsy. <laughs> Hopefully that will. Uh, uh, get rid of the whole Karen thing because I know a great Karen Poor that Karens. lives across the I street know, from I me know. and she's awesome. I know and, it. Yeah, so no one wants to be called that. But, but you're right. And so, what I do as the Free Hugs Project, people know I'm not going to share a George Floyd video, and, and I and I have a reason for that. One, I didn't even want to watch it; right. I still haven't. But I always say I don't need to view black trauma to know that it exists. Yeah, I don't. Right? Like I, I, know. I know that it's there. I know that we came from hundreds of years of slavery and systemic oppression and all of these things that have just bogged down. Our community. I don't want to share the next video that is going to trigger that trauma. So what I do is make sure that I'm only sharing the yep. the positive. And sometimes people try and challenge me for that, yep. call me out for that, saying, you know, there's other things happening in the community. And I'm like, all the rest of you guys are going to share that. Yeah, Let me exactly. focus on the good. Thank right? you. And so because that, that helps uplift yeah. me and yeah. it helps uplift the community. Yeah. And so I love the people who come to my channel just looking for that. They're like, I've seen enough of the mess. Like, I need to just feel good. And mm-hmm. then they come over uh, to that channel. But I think let that be a moment that we can like share not only w- with our viewers, but for them to challenge their family mm-hmm. members and their coworkers to say, hey, whenever we see these things, you can narrate it. You can narrate what happened to Jacob Blake. We don't all want to see that video. So when you plaster that thing yeah. on social media and now the, the members of the family have yeah. to see it, imagine if you're the dad and you're just trying to scroll yeah. through your social media and every other post you're seeing your yeah. son shot. Uh, who wants to who see wants that, that over and over and over, right? So I think we should be mindful of the way that we share trauma and instead focus on the positivity and, and how we create change. Like if you saw that video, 
and it got you all riled up in your spirit, got you worked up and feeling negative. For the wrong spirit. reasons. For the wrong reasons, yeah. right? If I watched it, why do I want to say, hey, yeah. Chris, you should watch this because yeah. it, it messed up my spirit. Yeah, it's kind of like, mess this up stinks. Too. Tell me if Here, it stinks. Tell me if it stinks. Get exactly. Out of my yeah, I don't want that. Right? Exactly. Nasty. So, so we need to get to a point as a society yes. where we're like, That's right. I just watched something that, that really affected me. No. And to be able to share it in that way, this thing really affected yeah. me and, and we have to do better. And if people are like, well, what affected you? What was it? Then, then let them go find it on their own. But I didn't even get a chance whether I wanted to decide if I wanted to see the Jacob Blake video or not because a couple seconds in, bam, 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 bam. I didn't want to see that again, right? And so we have to get to a point as a nation where we focus on the good. Yeah. And focus but, on but the how, how do you respond to people who are like, oh, you're unrealistic because you just put your head in the sand by only focusing on the good? I know my answer is enough bad's going to come without you even trying. There you go. Enough is going to come with, with it being totally involuntary. But don't keep putting yourself out there. It's, yes. it's, it's you're no bad thing. Yeah, you're, you're creating your a whole environment Completely. that just breeds negative venom. Well, if you if you think about it, so we're going to like even apply it to where we are right now as a nation. And when you think about the type of people who showed up to Kenosha, Wisconsin, like almost all of the agitators, whether they were claiming to protect property and use self-defense or whatever, none of those people would have, have felt like they mm. needed to be there if it wasn't for all of the yeah. stuff that they consumed. No to make them feel like I need to go into that community to do something yeah. or I need to go into that community to defend these properties because everything is getting too far out of hand. It's because of so much negativity that they have consumed yeah. that people feel like they need to be the superhero or the vigilante or all of these things that are now leading to more death, right? Like if you really think about Kenosha, right? Like think about the fact that someone was shot seven times, became paralyzed. Now, because of that, there are now, what, three more people or two more people who yeah. are dead because you were all responding to someone who was shot. And it's like, it, it's all When's the it sharing end? of that. Exactly. Now, how does the cycle end? That's and it. so then the next day, when someone is shot at a Trump rally in, in Portland, I would dare say there is a connection there because there's some retaliation. Well, they're shooting at this protest on the other side of the country. I need to make sure that I take my gun. And now you're on edge and you're trigger yeah. happy. All because of the negativity yeah. that we're sharing. Hey, watch this. This made me yeah. feel like crap. Hey, you feel this, like crap. Does this make you yeah, feel like crap right. too? Yeah. yeah, I feel like just, I'm angry. Too. I hope you get angry too. There and you if go. you don't get angry, what do you mean? Now I'm angry with you for not getting angry. Exactly. There are ways that we can create change without all of us having to yep. consume this stuff that just makes us feel nasty yep. inside. And so when I when I when we talk about what does police reform look like, and uh, we're getting the, the yeah <laughs> sign again. I hate that. A lot of these episodes it always just they like go that. so fast. Um, Five minutes. Okay, we're good for a little bit. Um, so, so when we talk about these things, whether it's defunding the police or or police reform, again, me and, and like you said, people will say, "Well, you're unrealistic, and you just want to put your your head in the sand." I feel like we all know these things are there. We don't have to see it and personally experience it to to be aware of it. And I think so many people like to feel like I have to personally experience That's this right. so that so that I can do something about yeah. it. Do you really though? I know. Right? Like, do you really have to personally experience that? And and I, I think we all have had our moments of interactions that we've had that we can say that was even just enough for me to experience to know that change needs to happen, mm -hmm. right? Like for me, I can remember a time that I was pulled over and an officer spoke to me in such a way that made me feel so small. And I was like, wow, like I, I like to consider myself a stand-up guy. And this yeah, see, just, that's, the, that's right? the interaction thing you're talking about. Exactly, so so I, I know that that needs yeah. to change. I don't need to see videos just, of, of shootings to know that, yeah. wait, the way that we interact with one another has to change. Right, but I also yeah. know that in a moment like that, my job is to live another day so that yeah. I can share it. Because what I'm not gonna do is now get into a combative argument or situation or jump out of the car and say, yo, you're not gonna talk to me like that, blah, 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 blah. 
I'm not going to escalate a mm-hmm. situation because now, guess what? I have lived to now, how old am I? I think, what, 38 or something like that? I'm still here. Yeah. Society said I wasn't supposed to be here. And I'm here and I'm in a whole nother state and I'm sitting across an awesome man who now, because of this conversation, we can create change. That's right. I got to live another day and I think we need more people to be able to do that. How do you create change? You live another day and yeah. you teach and you educate and you inform so that other people can live another another day Preacher. right and yeah. so that's that's yep. what i think this change looks like this yep. reform looks like and again if people think that i'm unrealistic because of that no. what's that song um you may say that i'm a dreamer but i'm not the only one yeah. right and so there's there's that change that's right if, if people consider me a dreamer i don't think i'm the only person that's, right. that's dreaming for that's right. a better future yeah. right and so I don't know. That five minutes. Listen, no, that is encouraging for me because I want people to look at instead of the negative dropped passes of someone's life, focus on the highlight reel. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, go focus on the highlight reel of whatever is causing you pain. Yeah. Because that's really what it's about. And I want people to realize that there's a reason why, although we're going through these trying times, when a police officer dies, they have the biggest funeral than anybody in the nation. Yeah. Why is it that an entire community stops mm-hmm. for the funeral of a fallen officer? I'm going to tell you why. Because they represent the balance of chaos and order. Yes. They represent the good of society. And that's what I hope people remember is there's there are more Chris Swansons and Kens and there's more movements out there. Yeah. But... When it comes to the profession of law enforcement, when all things settled, we have a highlight reel yeah. that has saved lives, that has protected people for hundreds of years, yeah. and we're going to be here for hundreds of more. Yeah. And our job is to make it better. That's why I'm not anti-police reform, but I am supportive of you better fund the greatest warriors Absolutely. on the planet. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. And, and I, I really think people need to understand that is really where we need to get. That's like, right. Fund the good. Fund the good, man. Right? Because when you're talking about defund, okay, yep. defund the bad. I'm sure we all agree with that. But fund the good and make sure that that's continuing to save lives. Make that's right. Make sure that like people feel protected in, in their communities. Yep. And we can't just now have the good police officers, the good police departments yep. have to suffer because of that's right. things that were done wrong in certain areas. I think everything should be on a case-by-case basis. And we look at, okay, what change needs to happen specifically yep. here? Because I can tell you right now, I have no problems with San Diego PD. Shout out to California. Boom. San, right? San so, Diego PD. I've got no issues with. Yeah. You know? And so there's there's departments and others like do. that. Right? That, that we so say that. close us out and then I'll close us out on my 60 seconds. Yeah, so, so listen up. Um, I, I think that the, the most important takeaway for this, this episode, especially just knowing that there is still this conversation right now about defund the police and, and police reform. I'm just going to leave it at fun to the good you know if if we if we're going to uh demand change i think that responsibility falls on on all of us but to highlight and acknowledge the good there's so many of these good interactions i see videos all the time of police going in and there was a video there was a african-american woman she was driving around and her baby started choking in the back seat of a car flags down the police police just jump right in they didn't stop and say wait this is a black baby that might grow up and not like me they didn't do that (laughs) right they just jumped in to save that child's life and somehow we ignore all of those things and we just focus on the jacob blake video i understand that is a tragedy But let's also focus on the good, fund the good so that more lives are saved. We all know how much we need that. Man, I appreciate that. And that is my message for all my brothers and sisters out there. Never forget that perspective, that you are still loved and that the people in this world need you. And you cannot give up on your community because your community, like these guys, have not given up on you. Don't listen to the narrative of the small-minded people that use very explosive words to go against us, which is reasons why we need to be better today than we were yesterday. Police reform is not negative. Do the right thing. People will respond. You are loved. And this is a noble career, a noble field that not everybody is able to do. Some people call 911 and some people are 911. Love you guys. Awesome.